Actually, it's more like a sci-fi movie. It's a it's a sci-fi movie. It's all the actors are sci-fi. I recognize. I know. I go down. I see the faces on the screen. Then I go to the cast credit list. I recognize sci-fi act. Okay. Anything Barclay Hope is in, folks, is a cheap ass movie for the sci-fi channel. I know. It's just that feeling that you're watching a sci-fi movie that's on the big screen. They're all meant. Okay. But this one is. This is. This has been a blockbuster franchise. Yeah. It's been over and over. But and over they again. they go to where they can make it for the least amount of money because mm -hmm. uh, you think you can make this movie in the studio zone in Los Angeles and expect no, to because it's too expensive. It's too expensive. You know, and part of it is they do a lot of scenes in the dark. And yes, 3D is there, but it's not so. This is a movie that could have been in 3D or not in 3D. Yeah. It's it's but more the 3D. And it just adds another layer. But they're they're doing it the 3D because they said they have I think one to five million regular visit regular people who go see it. They will go see it in 2D and 3D because they want to do the comparisons, which means then they'll buy they'll go see the movie two to three times. So if you if you do it in 2D and 3D, they go to see it. You two like double times. your audience. You double the audience with the same audience. They've got a captive audience. It's, um, um, it's just you know like world rap, worldwide wrestling has an audience. Mm -hmm. They only play to that audience. They get the same ratings every time. This will get. I remember the, the, the people doing the Resident Evil movie said they figure sixty to seventy-five million dollars for each movie they'll make up front, and then it will do that kind of money out of this country, mm -hmm. and then it will play on television and on DVD mm -hmm. forever. And they mm -hmm. have all of these things. I mean. You know, and then you can have like Final Destination nights, right? So they play all of them in a series. For Harry that's right. Yeah. Harry Potter's doing it. And got, when you got a series, James Bond does it. Every movie that has a series now does these special runs where you can go see everything. Mm -hmm. You know, because we were lucky. We, we got an invite to go see the Harry Potter thing, which was that really was cool. good because we paid we paid for two movies what it would cost to get one. Plus we got Harry yeah, Potter Yeah, we, we saw two movies. When we came in for the 9 o'clock show, we saw the people that were actually waiting in line for the midnight show. Yeah, and they paid as much as we did to see both movies. <laughs> we're sitting there, and we had all the best seats picked out already. But, um, but no, uh, like I said, if it, it's, um, it's an escapist project is all it is. Totally but you know what? It's a fun movie. It's a fun movie. I don't like slasher picks. I really hate them. But the problem is, is, is like that you watch it. This is like suspense. You watch it's, it over This and is over. not just a. This is not just you know like a blood and war movie. Oh, this is, it, it gets an audience. I mean, um, I like I'm one. I also sat in the audience one day. Okay, um, John Ritter's father was the actor Tex Ritter. John mm -hmm. Ritter's mother was the actress that John that Tex Ritter would always write. You know, he he'd basically kiss his horse and ride off in the sunset. You knew. What was going to happen every single movie that he was in, That's okay. and Tex Ritter is in, kiss her, you son of a bitch, kiss her, you know, and he's basically shouting in the back, and he knows, <laughs> you know, or um, um, Diane Lane, which I basically was in a thing when she was at, other than the, the, the thing, she's saying, you know, she's in a movie where she's taking her clothes off, don't take your clothes off, don't take your clothes off, don't take, and people are looking at her. And, you know, and she basically, oops, you know? but they get wrapped up in the characters and they know this 16 year old should not be taking her clothes off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so and then they're all, oh, you know, the people, she took her clothes off. She's 16 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was a change in the production code, folks. Mm -hmm. 16 year olds don't get naked anymore. Mm -hmm. So, but, um, but they'll get, they'll get wrapped up. I mean, there'll be people like, um, like like Nicholas De Crystal that like him personally. You like him. That because he's not the one. They will be pissed off about him. So, but um, I guess though, in, you know, in our in our vernacular, it's a, you know, it's 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 you you pay for what you get. If you if you're a, if you're a lover of this franchise, you'll probably you'll you know, probably love this. You'll movie. probably and it will make the money. And then they count on the people that wander in. To look at it, and then maybe hope that they'll want to see what was before to see what the difference is. Well, there isn't any difference. It's just the same movie from from the first one through the fifth, and they're already planning a sixth. I would too. I would, yeah. <laughs>
because it, the actor, they get the actor. It works. It, it's a, you know, they go to where they can get the production done cheaply. The actors will work reasonable. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of things like this, like I said, it's just, it's got people that you know from the sci-fi channel that are really, they're good actors. I'm not, okay, I make fun of Lorenzo Lamas. I like Lorenzo Lamas. Lorenzo Lamas does what he's paid to do. If he's played to be a sleepy-eyed CIA agent, he's that. If he's played to be a jackass, he's that. If he's played to be the dashing leading man, he's that. He's an actor. These people are paid for their decipher. Don't disparage the people on the Sci-Fi Channel um, because they're working. That's true, and they're working continually. They're working continually, and they work because they're. Um, the human trick is that when you go to Canada, you're getting actors that were trained in a British system of performance, which is basically oh. uh, in Britain you could have gotten a Sir Lawrence Olivier to play a, a, a you know shoveling up after a horse. You know, in, in a Hercules movie, you know, where because that's, you know, when Hercules had to clean out the, um, you know, the, uh, the, the king stables, yeah. you know, you'd have seen maybe a Sir Lawrence Olivier shoveling because they're actors. English actors are taught to take the roles. Um, they said, I remember, I went to a Lawrence, uh, uh, Orson Welles was one of my guest lecturers when I was in college. Orson Welles said, you know what, the, why I work so much in England and not in the United States? And they said, yeah, because they won't hire you here. And he said, I can be hired here. Don't ever think that I can't be hired here. The reason I work in England to do my productions is because an English actor will do whatever role he is given, no matter how big the actor is. They oh, don't really? think it's demeaning. Really? Yeah. He said, you know why they will not hire me to do a lot of roles in the United States? They consider it beneath me. And they won't even ask me. Because they consider it beneath me. There is, they said, there are virtually no rules for an English actor that it roles that are beneath them. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Well, it's part of it is there's not as many movies made, so... There's not as many movies made. Uh, <laughs> so if you get too picky, you're not working. Right. Well, you got to work if the... Because uh, you'll see an English actor tends... How the heck did... did how do they get all of that credits? I mean, like 100, 200, 300 credits. Oh, well, and they're Canadian and English actors because they work. They work. Michael Caine. Uh, Michael Caine, for instance. Michael Caine works for Perks, but they... Um, I remember... You know, uh, he was he was talking to Jimmy Stewart, and he said, you know, he always admired Jimmy Stewart, and they both had Academy Awards, they right? the Academy Award dinner, and, and, he's, and uh, you know, he said, you know, uh, how many movies have you made in your career? And he said, 50. He said, 50? You know, Jimmy he said, McCain said, 50? He said, I think I made 50 in one year. Yeah. Then he said, that's why you have more money than I do. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But that's how it was. Um, kind of I came from an era when, um, okay, I'll, I'll be honest, I have 1,200 parts in my career mm -hmm. because my grandmother was a script supervisor, my father was a second young man. If they had something open, I'd go in for a half an hour on one and then I'd change out, go over to another one in the same day. I was taught that that's what you did. My it's, father, it's almost like the old studio days. Yeah. They, it's like you're hired under contract by MGM. You do and whatever. So what they they send you wherever what movies and roles. And you could be in a okay. You basically um, uh, and the women. Um, I, I knew a woman called Virginia Gray, who basically was a heck of a lot more attractive than she worked on. <laughs> you know, Flakes, Kara Appleby on the Red Scout show. So funny, but she, um, you know, she got a call. She was working on two movies. At the very same day, and they called. They said uh, the woman playing the friend of, uh, you know, of uh, Joan Crawford split on us to go get a bigger role today. And they said this is where I would come in. She said we need you because Joan wants you. She know she knows that you can basic. She can bounce off of you. She said I'm doing another scene. She said just just put another jacket on and come over. So that's why she did. She put a jacket on over the dress. She comes in, walks into the screen like I would do without any material and, and they'd say, Crawford, okay, you know, you know, she said, you know, she'd call her Vinny, Vinny, you know, and, and then because then she's speaking to her as like she know one another and then, and, oh, okay, uh, yeah, oh, okay, okay, cut! Then she went, take the jacket off, go back to the other two movies she's working on, but that's how it was done. This is, when you're using these Canadian actors, Canadian actors who might be working on three different things on a set at the same time. 
and that's how you cut corners in Canada and in England. They work on, um, go look at the Eaton Brothers movies, go look at the movies at Sheffield Studios. You don't see uh, actors, you'll see Terry Thomas, Peter Sellers. Peter Sellers worked on everything for years. Uh, da uh, Benny Hill was all over the bloody place. He just did this, he'd do that. You know, he'd be a straight actor, he'd be a comic actor, no coward. No coward would play a little time, no coward, one of the great giants of the entertainment industry, would play a pitiful little role in a movie. He was in Around the World in 80 Days, and his pocket was about this big. But he got his name up there and he got paid for it. But this is why, don't disparage a Canadian performer or an English performer because they're working on a TV series. Mm -hmm. Because they're working. So, you know, we go on and on and on. But like I said, you know, it's, 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 I, I, I don't particularly like slasher movies, but there is an audience, and basically, um, actually I can finish this off. In, in the words of George N. Cohan, you have to remember this is show business. That's right. Which is why the show must go on. So, they so got Final you. Destination 5. Yes, Final Destination 6 is on its way. <laughs> yes, yeah. it, it opens. It opened today, and they're already getting sick. Well, well, you know, I think it's going to do better than. Uh, oh no, it should do better. It should do better because it has a so. weak uh, has a weak audience. I I yeah. wouldn't have opened it against Spy Kids because Spy Kids actually we are kind of go see because we want to see that. But one. I think it, there's weak opposition to it. It's weak opposition for some reason. I don't know why, but they pulled the movies that were supposed to be out in August that should have had an opportunity to make lots of money. So this, my guess is this is going to do better than what they initially had thought. Not what their new projections probably as of this week after they it, found it, out the it, schedule it, was changing. It, it's, um, it's, it means that, um, that I, I think, like they, I heard it said last night that um, the eighth movie shot its wad in its first week. Oh, really? So they project, uh, they had projected this at number one, and then unfortunately, Help. Now, that everybody. was a surprise. Help and it are gonna, they're two totally separate audiences, but they may not be two separate audiences as much as you think, because, uh, uh, say, the, the uh, parents go see this, they go see Help, and the children go over to see Final Destination. Mm -hmm which means they're picking up the same family, but they've increased the amount of people coming to the theater with a movie that nobody thought would make anything. They knew this was, they knew this would, they know this is going to hit. It would um, be predictable. Like it's you know. predictable. They know, they can get money in the bank. Mm -hmm. And it's like the Saw franchises are money in the bank. Same system, you know, which was a throwaway movie that basically made so much money they couldn't have believed it. They got sued because it made too much money. Really? Yeah, but it's a it's franchises. Franchises are very important because I mean we know about franchises because we have our own franchises. But uh, but like I said, until next time, until we actually, I'm not certain. I think the next movie up is Spy Kids. Yeah. Um, which so, oh God, which yeah. we're gonna see because they're talking about being at, it being in 4D. Yeah, a uh, Roma version too, I think. So we gotta go <laughs> see that. We're gonna report on 4D. Not that I want to see Spy Kids. <laughs> You know, it, it does have Anthony Banderas, so, though. So, but they, I think they give him Jessica Alba instead of Carla, Carla Gallerina this time. So mm -hmm. she didn't want it to do another one. But then, and so it, until the next time, it's a little camp. And this is not a spring chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. For more information, you can always go to www.montybubbles.net on the net, and you can basically join us. Um, uh, go join us on Twitter, and very shortly on Facebook. And wherever you're watching, subscribe to us and follow our daily newscast in 3D. And thank you once again for over 40 million links on the internet.